First, let's take a moment for some self-congratulation, not me self, let's just call it congratulation, um, because there was a uh, sort of a seminal moment that has happened today with two of the panelists here. Air Swap, do you, do you, got, you want to tell us what it was that happened and, and discuss why it, was, why it was such a big deal? Sure. Uh, so at AirSwap, uh, with our friends at Securitize, uh, we have successfully tested uh, an integration of the DS protocol on AirSwap, uh, completing a test trade of a test security token using uh, the DS protocol Mira. and the AirSwap protocol, uh, which is very exciting um, for us and for Securitize as well. That is amazing. But now, for anyone who doesn't have any idea what we just said, like we have successfully tested the DS protocol and the this and the that, like what does that mean? What is that? What, what is that? So, so I'm going to defer to Carlos because, admittedly, I'm a lawyer and I really can't explain <laughs> it that well. So Carlos, it was illegal, by the way. Wow. So. That was a moment of self-awareness in so blockchain. What happened and for me is is, uh, is twice more. Uh, you know, motivating because the, the token actually was the Spice VC token, which is my the, the Spice I, VC uh, yeah, token. Yeah, I was yes. the token they used for for the test, together with their protocol from from Securitas. Okay, so let's pause there. So again, you guys know so much, and for some who don't know all of the the lore, so the Spice VC token is very significant. It's an OG token in the space because there's only a few funds that started off by actually tokenizing. Spice VC, of course, was one of the legendary originals. And so there was a Spice VC token. Now that led to the creation of Securitize, right? Am I that Correct. The, the process of doing that is what birthed the whole company of Securitize, right? Correct. Okay, so, that's background. Please continue. Okay, we're talking okay. about what happened so, today. So what happened today yeah. is, is very simple. So it was the first time ever that a, a digital security was traded peer-to-peer -peer with instant settlement on the blockchain. That's a big effing deal right there. Say it again? It was the first time. <laughs> it was the first time everyone ever. Everyone is underwhelmed. I'm the only one who's excited. <laughs> Hold on a second. It was the Let's first time again. ever. Let me, let me just explain it differently. Yes. It was the first time ever that, you know, I had a digital security that I actually own because when you own Apple shares, you actually don't own Apple shares. You own the entitlement to uh, someone else that owns the entitlement to someone else that owns the entitlement to someone else that actually owns the share. So when you have a digital security on your wallet, let's say on my Ether wallet or with Kingdom Trust and Custody mm -hmm. or with Ledger uh, on your hardware wallet, you actually own that security. You hold it and you own it. And then you can actually send it to someone else through uh, you know, a bulletin board type uh, application like AirSwap. And someone has to make sure that this transfer is compliant, which is what we do. Yes. So the first time this whole thing has actually worked of trading a security you own and give it to someone else peer to peer through a system in a compliant way it was today. Incredible. Instant. There it is. And, 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 if, is. and if I could just, just add br briefly, one of the really, I think, unique and fun parts of it was that it was a collaborative arrangement. And if you look at, you know, at AirSwap, we have a smart contract that addresses counterparty risk. It allows for atomic swaps so that you can do a transfer without giving custody to a third party. We have a protocol that allows for peer-to-peer -peer trading without an order book, without order matching, without transaction fees. Securitize has a protocol that can address compliance, that once you do the manual due diligence, the investor onboarding, there's an easy verification process, a way to check and call on a transfer to make sure it's compliant. And the merger of these different tools gives you a potential application right, to complete a life cycle of a trade. So that's a big deal. Now, why? somebody tell me why that, I mean, I'm excited by it. I, we work the Security Token Academy where we teach about security tokens. So when a security token is actually traded, that means this whole thing works. That's kind of exciting and it means I can keep doing what I do for another X amount of time until it all falls to <laughs> crap. And let's not let that happen, all you guys, so I can keep a job. All right, so. Um, I think well, make sure you keep your job. That's like, all that matters. Produce more news and more stuff so you keep your that's job. All. That's all. Isn't that why you do what you do every morning? <laughs> so, um, but really, why is, why is this significant? Why, why does this matter? So it's significant for two reasons. So first, because this was a private share on a fund mm -hmm. that typically will be liquid. Yes. Okay. So, so you will not be able to actually trade it. And then if you actually are able to trade it because it's publicly traded, you know, you actually are not really trading things. So like when you go to, you know, E-Trade, which is connected to NASDAQ and you buy Apple shares, you're actually not buying Apple shares. People don't know, but yeah. what you're just sharing is the, is the entitlement towards that share. But behind the scenes, there is a two-day settlement mm -hmm. that it actually takes to change the actual ownership of the share 
from one person to another person. And that person is not even the person that actually bought the share, it's the broker that maybe sold the share. So, so there is a, a whole of inefficiency in, in you know, let, let me just rewind. In mm -hmm. the 70s, things were paper. <laughs> yes. So you had a piece of paper and that proved the ownership to you. That was the, the you know, the right registry of your ownership on the share. And if you wanted to move the share, someone has actually moved the paper. And the paper moved hands. And today, even today, the, the, F, the SEC requires that transfer agents record their fingerprints with them, mm -hmm. with the FBI, because that's the proof that someone has taken a paper share and moved it from one place to another, which is a completely arcane thing. Yes. Now, what happened is this whole paper system of trading shares collapsed for obvious reasons, because the moment they were a lot of demand for people who wanted to trade shares, you couldn't do it physically. And, and back then, the New York Stock Exchange, or Nasdaq didn't exist, but New York Stock Exchange, they would actually open up only three or four days a week, because they needed one day to actually move physically the shares with bicycles <laughs> in Wall Street. That's just, that's like 40 years ago, so I'm not talking about like, you know, ages. And then someone they said, okay, let's do this digitized shares and let's allow for electronic trading and things like that. Yeah. And they did it in a way that they reduced the settlement to like three days, but creating a ton of inefficiencies that you actually don't own the share, uh, you know, that there's a central depository that is the one that actually owns all the shares, that is a central counter party risk because you've done the trade and you gave me the money, but because I haven't transferred the ownership of the share, if the company goes bankrupt or changes the price of the share radically, then there is money being lost there. So there's all this, you know, complexity and inefficiencies that people don't know about how shares are being traded because the underlying you know, technology they use for digitization is the wrong one. So, so I think blockchain allows for pure instant settlement, and this is yep. what we did today. Today yes. we did instant settlement. Yes. Uh, and that allows for just so many, you know, new things and so many, you know, elimination of intermediaries the same way that Bitcoin eliminates banks when you transfer money. Uh, so here you're eliminating, you know, central current priority risk, you're eliminating central depositories, transfer agents, etc., because you do instant settlement. That's right. the beauty of it. Big deal. It's a big deal additionally because, as Carlos said, a lot of the excitement for digital securities revolves around this idea of liquidity, mm -hmm. which is being able to exchange an asset for something like cash or, or something that can be exchanged for other assets. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, we've seen a lot of lack of liquidity, certainly in this space as we wait for regulation to clear up on exchanges and things like this. And so this is one of the first examples of actually showing liquidity being possible in the market. And so we're, we're making significant advancements towards that road to actually full liquidity for this market. 